was her, and she made her first appearance in the 22-runner Sparshall Maiden Stakes. Well, her talent was no secret, and she went off at 5-4 to four on. This was the betting at the all, 5-4 to four on Bosra, having opened at evens. The only one back to beat her, as you can see, was Watch Me, who'd had a couple of previous runs. John Hanmer describes the closing stages. Keeper's Dawn, Bosra Sham, Watch Me, then Polly by Storfan. And over in the centre, Arcady already getting outpaced as they come to the two and a half furlong from home point. And Bosra Sham disputes the lead with Keeper's Dawn. Then just in behind them comes Watch Me. And Bosra Sham is now asserting for Michael Kinnan and going clear. Dark Deeds running on from a long way back. But Bosra Sham well clear coming into the final furlong. Running on well is Far Away Waters. So is Dark Deed and coming to the last hundred yards. Bosra Sham has spread eagled our field. It's going to be very close for second. Far Away Waters just beats Dark Deed. Then back in fourth place is Sarnesta. Not much argument about that. There wasn't really a second and third, but the two that were second and third were far away waters, 66 to 1, and Dark Deed at 25 to 1. And already, Bosra Sham is 14 to 1, second favourite for next year's 1,000 guineas. Blue Duster, whom we saw win at Ascot, the favourite at 12 to 1, and joint second favourites, Bint Salsabil and Bosra Sham. And that's it, they're installed. 90,000 to the winner. Yorkies! For this mile, they're running. And Willie Carson makes straight for the far rail on Shadaïd. Rouge Ronson upsides. Nobody anxious to make it, but Mattia going on. Mattia going on from Bin Shadaïd on the far side. Shawani, who's got very stirred up, not really very well settled. Uh, nor is Rouge Ronson. Over on the far side is Bosra Sham and Mattia making it from the two greys, Bin Shadaïd, nearest to us, Shawani, then Rouge Ronson, Bosra Sham, and Zelzella. Still, Mattia and Richard Hills cutting it out as they race towards the home turn in this Phillies mile. Bin Shadaïd is second. Third is Shawani. Bosra Sham moving well in fourth. Just in behind them come Rouge Ronson and Zelzella making their way across now from the far side into the home turn Mattia and Bint Shadaid from Bosra Sham moving into third then Shawani in four then comes Rouge Ronson and Zolzella and Bint Shadaid has taken it up now under Willie Carson from Bosra Sham then comes Shawani, and it's Bosra Sham on the near side, in the centre. Bint Shadaid over on the far side, Mattia, as they hit the furlong pole, and Bosra Sham has gone for home, and Bosra Sham streaking away now from Bint Shadaid and Mattia, and turning this into a procession. Bosra Sham striding up towards the line, going to win the Phillies mile, very impressively indeed, up the line. Bosra Sham is the winner, Bint Shadaid is second, and third is Mattia. Four was Rouge Ronson, and then came Shawani, and finally, Zelzella. So the result of the Phillies Mile, the favourite for the 1996 uh, 1000 guineas. Bosra Sham wins it very impressively. A third recent success in the race for Henry Cecil. The result first, number two, Bosra Sham, owned by Mr. Wafik Saeed, trained by Henry Cecil, and written by Pat Henry. Second was number one, Bin Shadaid, owned by Sheikh Hamdan Al Maktoum, trained by John Dunlop and written by Willie Carson. And third was number three, Mattia, owned by Sheikh Hamdan Al Maktoum, trained by Ben Hanbury and written by Richard Hills, with fourth number four, Rouge Ronson. And this filly naturally shortens for the 1,000 guineas from six to one to seven to two with Ladbrokes down to four to one uh, with William Hill and four to one with Corals. Here's how she won. Well, what a smart filly she looks. Uh, Bosra Sham moving up on the outside here just to take it up from in the center. Bin Shadow Yid over on the far side as Mattia in the black cap. 
but as soon as Pat Edry goes for her, there's instant response, and even on this rain-softened ground, she clears away. This is a class filly, Jim. You see how she quickened up there in two strides and left the opposition for dead. Bin Shadaid went on at the same pace. She looked a bit flat-footed in her two wins. Well, she's flat-footed today, although Bosra Sham made her look like that. I think we've seen a really high-class filly, this, because she's handled the ground, the ground that's softened here by the rain, and at Newbury, as you say, Jim, the ground was riding fast. I think she's a filly that's going to like fast ground. A really terrific performance, Jim. Just look at that. Pat has a look over his left shoulder. What do you think of that? She is a class filly, isn't she? She is indeed, and gives Henry Cecil the last laugh here under these controversial circumstances this weekend. He'll be a pleased man tonight. And they're away. Najia breaks well. Najia just about uh, the leader, Miss Universal over on the far side. Please, Suzanne, between horses. Najia on the rail, and Bosra Sham tucked in just behind uh, Najia. And uh, showing right up there on the rail now, Boz Risham, with Najia towards her outside. Far left is Miss Universal, then comes Please Suzanne. Tucked in on the rail is uh, Flying Squaw, and it's Najia and Boz Risham, these two. Moving into third is Keeper's Dawn. Miss Universal on the outside. Richard Hughes still tucked in on the fence on Flying Squaws. They race towards the three furlong pole. Najia on the near side. Bosra Sham with her white face on the far side. Then comes Keeper's Dawn in third. Running down now past the three pole and towards the two in this Dubai duty free Fred Darling stakes. Najia on the near side. Bosra Sham on the far side. Still well up with them is Keeper's Keeper's Dawn, just in behind them as Flying Squaw, and making a little bit of ground, it's still Sealer over on the far rail, and Najia drops out very quickly there, Flying Squaw drops out too, coming down to the furlong pole, and it's Bosra Sham, lengthening now, away from Keeper's Dawn, Bosra Sham from Keeper's Dawn and Silt Sealer, and as they race into the closing stages, Bosra Sham's asked to quicken, she quickens well, she strides well clear, and as they come to the line, Bosra Sham wins it cosily. Keeper's Dawn is second and third, Silt Sealer, and four was Miss Universal, and last was Flying Squaw. And so the result of the Dubai Duty Free Fred Darling Stakes first, number one, Bosra Sham, owned by Mr. Wafik Saeed, trained by Henry Cecil, his third this decade and ridden by Pat Edery, a double for him this afternoon. And away they go, racing for the Potemps 1,000 guineas and breaking out well was Vince Southerbill with Honest Guest in a sheepskin noseband in the centre, Miss Universal in an orange jacket with papering in Sheikh Mohammed's colours and it's papering that goes on from Miss Universal and then Vince Southerbill who's close up with My Melody Parks and then Bosra Sham, the favourite, very close indeed on the outside in about fifth place. Wider out then to Keeper's Dawn and then Mataya back to Made for the Hills and Honest Guest and Vince a yid. Towards the back at this stage, the outsider Portuguese Lil with dance sequence and also My Branch. Passing the five then, and it's papering the lead up. Out in front by two lengths to My Melody Parks. Then Vince South, a bit on right, a picture in the blue colours. Out wide then is Miss Universal, followed by Bosra Sham and Mataya, and back in the field to Made for the Hills, an honest guest in the midfield. Inside the final half mile, back to Graham in the grandstand. Now, Boss was shown on the outside with a star cap, and Padetteri is just pushing her along now. She went for the pain barrier at Newbridge, she's getting closer. It's uh, papering in the lead. Here comes My Melody Parks in the nose band next to the rail with a striped cap in Salsabil. Now Boswell Sham's going forward on the outside. The pink cap, Matthias Bang there. Here comes My Branch, black cap looking for room next to the rails. Dance sequence starts to pick up. They're inside the final quarter mile. And next to the rails, the striped cap in Salsabil goes to home. Under pressure now, Boswell Sham as they race down into the dip. It's been Salsabil and Boswell Sham, and Boswell Sham goes on. Matai now through the second, been Salsabil third. They're inside the final furlong. And it's Bos was sham in the lead, she's sticking her neck out. Here on the outside comes Vince Shadayin and Mataya, but Bos was sham is going to take it up towards the line. Bos was sham is the winner. Bos was sham takes it very close to second. Mataya and Vince Shadayin. Then came my branch and uh, honest guest in the field trail back to papering made for the hills and keepers dawn who was last of all and so the result then of this very eventful for tenths 1000 guineas what a brave filly she is this uh, bosma sham in the colors of wafik sad of course a sail topper at uh, tadasols she's uh, trained here at newmarket by henry cecil bred by gerald lee this daughter of woodman ridden by pat Edery, who has filled in the biggest uh, missing piece in his classic jigsaw by taking his first 1000 guineas a very close call for second place. 
Very close call for second place between uh, number eight, Mattia. Nearest to us at the bottom there, pink cap worn by Richard Hills. Putting in her best work in the closing stages, the black cap, the far side, Bin Shadaid. My branch going as well as any with two furlongs to go. But this is a brave performance from a filly who's had an interrupted preparation that's been so uh, well and dramatically documented. She was uh, just being pushed along ooh, past the halfway stage. Some of us thought that she wasn't going to win, but she has. She's stuck in neck out, and uh, she's done it in great style. She's unbeaten, four out of four. Boss Sham, the winner of the Potemps 1000 Guineas. Well, she caught the eye for throughout last autumn from the moment she made her uh, bow on the race course or bow on the race course and before she's... Ashkelani 100 to 30 now Boz Rasham and Mark of Esteem has been on the slide all the time 11 to 2 bar there goes Ashkelani and now Mark of Esteem due into go. stall number 5 and he'll be the last to be installed last one coming in these winners of over 2 million earners of over 2 million pounds between them he got a little bit warm and now he's just a little bit on his toes this son of Darshan with a white face that's it he's in under orders the Queen Elizabeth the second sticks and they're running Bosra Sham towards the left over on the far side Bijou Dan that is Bosra Sham and Bijou Dan in the early stages from Shanwood Forest then First Island then Mark of Esteem then Ash Kalani and finally Soviet Star and Bijou Dan has settled down in the lead from Bosra Sham the filly over on the far side is Shanwood Forest then comes First Island Mark of Esteem Ash Kalani and Soviet Star Bijou Dan the leader from the only filly Bosra Sham then comes Charnwood Forest Mark of Esteem is four five six and seven a First Island Soviet star and Ashkelani as they race towards the half mile pole in this Queen Elizabeth II stakes and it's Bijou Dand the leader from Bosra Sham and Sharnwood Forest that pass the half mile pole racing towards the home turn now and still Jason Weaver on Bijou Dand by two lengths from the Philly Bosra Sham then Sharnwood Forest then comes Mark of Esteem on the inside of First Island. Ashkelani is still the back marker of the seven runners as they swing into the straight. Two and a half furlongs only to run now. Bijou Dan being pressed by Bosra Sham. Then comes Sean Wood Forest unleashing a run in the white cap. Then behind them First Island. And here comes Ashkelani now on the outside. But it's Bosra Sham, the filly, who's taken it up and attempting to become the first filly to win it who won the Guineas in 40 years. But Mark of Esteem and Mark of Esteem and Frankie Dottori. He completes a fantastic treble. Frankie Mark of Esteem has won it from Bosra Sham. First Island was third and four came Charnwood Forest and the disappointing Ashkelani, Bijou Dand and Soviet Star who finished third last year was last this time. And so the result, an electrifying victory for number six, Mark of Esteem, owned by Godolphin Racing, Trained by Saeed Bin Tarur and written by Frankie Dottori, his third winner of the afternoon, third winner for Saeed and third winner for Godolphin. Second with number seven, Bosra Sham, owned by Mr. Wafik Saeed, trained by Henry Cecil and written by Pat Eddery. And third was number two, First Island, owned by Mollers Racing, trained by Jeff Ragg and written by Michael Hills with fourth, number one, Sharnwood Forest. This is the winner of the 1996 Queen Elizabeth II stakes, Mark of Esteem. He came there with the most blinding turn of speed you've ever seen at the end of this classic race. And what a stunning, fantastic performance this was. Bijou Dan made the running, but at his own pace. Pat stayed on his shoulder. He was the first one to pounce on Bosra Sham. It looked as though his first run would be successful. Ash Kalani coming from behind, came wide, but didn't pick up quite the way Gerard Nasser hoped that he would. And Frankie waiting, patient, waiting to pounce, waits till the last furlong, and then he says go, and the response was electrified. 
bit fast for it today. You can see there her head's just popped back into Pat's lap a little bit. But here we have Mark of Esteem, 2,000 guineas winner. Takli Bosrasham, 1,000 guineas winner. Here he begins to wear the filly down. The stronger of the two, a colt. I think maybe might be liking the ground that little bit better. But Bosrasham battles on bravely. But Mark of Esteem really has shown that he's a colt of the highest class today. He's got the speed, he's got the acceleration, and he's got Frankie de Torre. And he's got the willingness to go and win his race too. A 2,000 guineas winner whose merit was questioned. Well, there's no question about it now. He's the champion miler of Europe. He's beaten the best, and Frankie's going to tell everyone. Frankie is not exactly showing any signs of disappointment with... Uh Mark of Esteem, the 130 winner of a historic Queen Elizabeth II stakes, in which he produced the most amazing turn of foot to uh, complete a remarkable travel on day one of the Festival of Racing at Ascot. <laughs> One and a quarter lengths and four lengths. A great run by the filly, Bosrasham as well. But this coat by Darshan out of homage by Adjdal, something exceptional. He's won over 300, earned over 350,000 pounds now in winning four of his six races. Said Ben Sarur walking beside his protege, Mark of Esteem. Is Frankie going to do his? Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> and Sheikh Mohammed greets him, congratulates him. Arfadi has definitely improved a lot since her race at Ascot. I mean, it was a marvellous achievement after a long layoff. Yeah. Uh, she's come on a lot. We've always thought that. Probably the mile quarter would even suit her better than the mile. Mm -hmm. um, she's very well. They kick away, and where does the pace come from? And it's even top that's uh, going into the lead. Richard Quinn takes the initiative here to Halling sitting second, and then Tim Marida in third, Boswell Sham in front of First Island, and Glory of Dance just the back marker. But it's even top that does the work here. Gives the lead to Halling in second, sitting third. The green jacket is Tim Marida. Johnny Murder rides. Boswell Sham is settled four. And and behind those we have First Island and the back marker is Glory of Dancer, so our leader. And they're tacking over towards the stand side now and it's Even Top that uh, has the edge. Here goes Even Top into the lead and he stride out well. A couple of lengths back then we find Halling sitting in second place. There goes Halling into second, Frankie de Torre, equally well poised. Tim Marida is third, she finishes well, Boswasham is in fourth. Then we have uh, First Island and Glory of Dancer is the back marker. But it's still even top that has the edge. And they come down past the uh, six furlong marker to the five and they're halfway in the Dubai Champion Stakes. And it's even top, the leader. Halling sitting in second. They're one and two. Then in third place now, we have Tim Arida still. Bosvasham with the white stays on the outside. Then First Island and then Glory of Dancer, Olivier Pellier for six of the six. They come down past the four furlong marker. And it's still even top that has it. Even top to Halling in second. Tim Arida still pulling hard in third. Then Bosvasham just being nudged along. Then comes First Island. Halling now uh, lengthens his stride. And even top left maroon next to the stands rail. As Halling goes to home, Bosvasham and Tim Arida are after him. They come down past the bushes. Two furlongs to go in the Dubai Champion Stakes. And the action is down the centre of the track. And it's Halling in blue. White sneeze. Bosvasham and Bosvasham takes command. They race down into the dip. It's Bosvasham going on from home. Here comes Timurida inside the final furlong and Boss Rasham Halling in second place, then Timurida in third, but hail a champion filly, it's Boss Rasham, she's taken Halling up towards the line, Boss Rasham wins it at the post, Boss Rasham panning to be looked round, Halling second, Timurida third, even top four, and tight for five between the back two, which were Gloria Dancer and First Island, and so... The result of a most memorable Dubai champion stakes. It's a win for number six, Bos Rasham. Two on is the price of Bos Rasham now. Centre stalls at nines, twelves about Predapio, and it's 14 to 1, bar those three. Well, that's it, all set. There are the orders, they're off. 
and they race away for the 1997 Brigadier Gerard Stakes and Henry V leads them but only at a steady pace in the early stages from Prodapio who races in second place Posidonis is in third then center stalls just ahead of in fifth place Rocky Oasis and Boz Rasham is held up at the back of the field last of the six but only four lengths off this steady pace being set by Henry V about a length and a half clear from Prodapio with a neck on the inside to Posidonis who's anxious to go a little bit faster taking a keen tug then center stalls in four and on the inside Rocky Oasis also taking a keen grip buried away on the outside Bosra Sham her white face just nosing up on the outside of center stalls as they race through the first quarter mile and Henry V Still dictating matters, a length and a half clear from in second place, Prodapio on the outside of Posidonis and a line of three at the back, centre stalls, flanked by Bosra Sham on the outside and Rocky Oasis has just been shuffled back to last on the inner as they begin a right-hand turn that carries them out of the back straight. The race really yet to develop, standard racing order down the back straight, very little change with Henry V, about a length and a half clear from Prodapio. Half a length on the inside then to Posidonis. Bosrasham on the outside round the turn is now the overall back marker. Rocky Oasis and centre stalls cornering slightly better as they begin the turn for home. And Henry V leads about a half clear. Just beginning to increase the tempo from Pradapio, centre stalls, Posidonis, Bosrasham's got plenty of daylight on the outside and will be asked to improve shortly by Kieran Fallon, then Rocky Oasis. Henry V is flat to the boards, joined on the outside by Pradapio, then centre stalls, Bosrasham is gradually being wound up on the outside, moving closer, then Posidonis and Rocky Oasis. Henry V abdicated the lead, it's Pradapio who leads from centre stalls, Bosrasham looming up there on the outside, a major threat. And now Kieran Fallon asks the filly to quicken, she lengthens goes a length and a half clear from Pradapio centre stalls, Posidonis and Rocky Oasis, Bosrasham, Pradapio won't go away the far side, Bosrasham having to pull out all the stops, a big run from Pradapio, sticking to his guns Bosrasham possibly idling in front he's going to win in workmanlike rather than impressive fashion, Bosrasham sees off Pradapio, centre stalls third then Rocky Oasis for Posidonis and coming home last, Henry V one on favourite was the starting price for Bosra Sham. In second was Predapio at 12 to 1. The total returns win 120, places 110 and 230 in the dual forecast 270. All six ran. Mile and a quarter out, and they're away. And who's going to make it? Nobody very anxious to make it. And so London News is going on. London News, the South African hope, goes on from Al Hath on the near side and then even top. In comes Boz Rasham and Balalaika and Ashani as the back marker. And going up on the outside of London News is Al Hath to take it up. Al Hath takes it up clearly now from London News. And then even top and a little gap to Boz Rasham. And it looks as though Frankie de Tori's tactics here on Al Hath are to make this a strongish pace now. He's got even top coming up to nearly join him with London News back in third and four Boz Rasham. Then five and six of Balalaika and Ashani. They're racing towards the five pole already. And even top on the outside of Al Hoth. Little gap then to London News. Then Kieran Fallon on this odds on favourite Boz Rasham. Just uh, niggling along now niggling at her to get a little bit closer to them as they've passed the half mile marker racing towards the home straight and it's even top on the outside of Al Hoth and Boss Rasham now moving up on the outside of London News. They're into the straight Al Hoth and even top with Boss Rasham coming there very strongly now Boz Rasham coming to mow them down, and whoever's laid 18,000 to 8 on this filly has no worries whatsoever. She's striding into the final furlong to win this in, with consummate ease. Boz Rasham getting a cheer from the crowd for her immense ability. She strides to the line, 5, 6, 7, 8, make it 10 if you like, lengths clear, of in second place Al Hoth with... A gallant South African, London News, securing third prize. Well, certainly, although he's coming back in trip, I don't think that's um, against him. I did say this morning, I think that uh, he's a horse he likes to come late on, and that ought to suit him. Um, he's just getting himself a little bit warm, as he said, it's fairly muggy. But, uh, Derek, you're down at the start. What's going on? 
Interesting point down here. Allied Forces is absolutely dripping, but Frankie Dutore told me that's normal. He is a favourite. She looks very cool, Boss Rasham. Looks very cool. Benny the Dip is not Benny the Drip today. He's just like he was before the derby. Willie Ryan said he came down at the start well. The favourite looks very cool. Very cool. Now, she did cause one or two problems at uh, Royal Ascot, and they're hoping that Boss Rasham will go in. By the way, this officially is the best race that's ever been run. Average rating of all the horses here, 124. That makes this officially the best horse race ever run anywhere in the world. Bosra Sham now being helped. Now they have permission to put the blinds on Bosra if she causes a problem. She can be a little bit of a madam. She came down very cool, very calm, and she did cause problems before the start at Royal Ascot. These starting soil handlers, the top boys, they're the ones who did at Royal Ascot and also at the Derby. Three sets of handlers, North, Middle and South. This is the Southern boy. She's in. We've got two to go. Here now is Benny the Dip when he arrived. And finally, you can see this horse, Allied Force, is really sweating up. But Frankie says that's normal. It's dripping underneath the sweat. They're just about all in. One to go. This is the 1997 running of the Coral Eclipse. Let's go back to our race course commentator, Graham Good. As Benny the Dip is uh, urged forward. Into the stalls. Just one to go then after this. This will be Allied Forces. Expect the pace to come from Benny the Dip, if nothing else consents to go on, expects a Sue to be played late. And they kick away over a mile and a quarter. And where is the early pace? It's Pilsudski that goes on by about a neck, but Benny the Dip the inside. They're sitting one and two. Boswell Sham is third, Sasuru fourth. Held about the back is Allied Forces as they kick to the first quarter mile. And it's Pilsudski on the outside of Benny the Dip. Benny the Dip gains the day now. Goes on by length. Pilsudski in second. Boswell Sham, Sasuru. And the back of the pack is Allied Forces. If anything, he's steadied the pace on Benny the Dip. Pilsudski in second. Boswell Sham with the white sleeve sitting in third. The red cap on the outside is Sasuru and then Allied Forces. And they go through the first half mile in this coral eclipse, the hundredth running of this eclipse stakes. And it's Benny the Dip, the Vodafone Derby favourite, uh, the Vodafone Derby winner, showing the way to, in second place, Pilsudski. Then Sasuru making ground on the outside of Bosra Sham. And then we've got Allied Forces. So they come down towards the halfway stage and the turn out of the back stretch. Benny the Dip leading. Quite a steady pace. It's going to be a kick to the finish here. Pilsudski in second and then on the inside we've got Bosra Sham, the inside that is, of Sasuru. And Bosra Sham might just be kept in by Sasuru and Allied Forces has got the whole manoeuvres covered as they make the final turn. Indication as to how narrow the course is at that juncture at the top of the home straight now. And it's Benny the Dip, Pilsudski, Bosra Sham's on the inside. Sasuru pulling double, Allied Forces played late. They've got three furlongs to go, and Bosra Sham is trying to commit next to the rails, but Pilsudski is going as well. He has got no room on Bosra Sham. Has to pull that one wide. Down to the two furlong marker now. Pilsudski uh, goes on. Benny the dip the rail. Bosra Sham in third place and being ridden along. Getting closer now, down to the final furlong. The Breeders' Cup winner, Pilsudski in the lead. The Derby winner, Benny the Dip in second. A champion stakes winner, Bosra Sham in third. Flat to the boards, making ground, but Pilsudski got first one on them. Pilsudski, here comes Bosra Sham the outside. It's Pilsudski by link. Bosra Sham is finishing fast at the line. Pilsudski, Bosra Sham, Benny the Dip, Allied Forces, and Sasuru last of all. And so, in a tactical race, Pilsudski has won it in the, this Polish president horse of the colours of Lord Weinstock and 11 to 2 chance, trained at Newmarket by uh, Michael Stubb, home bred at the Valley McCall Stud, well done to them, the Breeders' Cup and the Coral Eclipse winner now. Mick Kinnan has won this for the second time for Michael Stubb. He won it earlier in the, a few years back with Opera House and he certainly uh, got the kick here. Second horse home is number four, Boz Rashan. The judge will call a photo for second place. It's a close call for second. Derby winner, Benny the Dip back in third. So no, no, no Nash one, no Mill Reef. It's a close call for second place. They've flashed past the post together, but they're a length behind. The winner of the Coral Eclipse, and that is Pil Sutsky. A five runner race, and how many times have we seen it? Traffic problems, and Willie Ryan just uh, steadied the pace up.
and from very early on there was always just that uh, doubt in your mind as to whether Bosrasham was going to get uh, into trouble you saw there where the, the uh, running rail actually dips back in Willie Ryan perfectly within his rights he made a straight line from one apex to the other Kieran Fallon thought that he had enough toe to get up the inside and he didn't by which time Pil Sudski had already uh, headed for home head down really tough horse I thought he was just going to run a little bit free early on when he came out of the traps Mick Canaan got him settled and just gets home probably a length and a half something it did in the death but uh, if you back the favourite Bosra Sham you've, got... you've been making the headlines recently what are your reactions to the, the press you're getting the reviews and what people are saying and talking about Henry Cecil well, I haven't even been enjoying it very much mm -hmm. I, I haven't I mean the whole thing goes back to uh, the eclipse in Bosra Sham really which was, the race was very unfortunate I mean she's a great filly and um, things went wrong I mean Karen probably made a mistake, uh, but all, all jockeys make mistakes, the most experienced jockeys make mistakes, it was just a, it was a sad day, but mm. I mean that is behind. But then it was reported in the press and talked about that you were very upset, uh, Wafik Said said he wasn't going to ride his horses again. Looking back in hindsight, I know hindsight is a great thing, do you regret what was said at the time? Well I think uh, obviously, you know, at some moment, I mean it was, it was, it was a d d disappointing day, but um, uh, so obviously if anything was said one would regret it but um, uh, the owner if they feel that um, they'll be have more competence with somebody else uh, you know it's their prerogative yeah? mm -hmm. but it's difficult uh, put yourself in the stable jockey's point of view you know a lot of people said oh he was lucky to get the job at the beginning of the year now he's got it and people were making waiting for him to make a mistake he made a mistake and you came out on the side that said he had made a mistake well I mean I think he did make a mistake but I mean it doesn't it doesn't mean you know you cut somebody's throat yeah? I, um, I think people keep waiting for me to sort of say well you know uh, you made a mistake and and, and that's it mm. but it's not it at all I mean uh, I decided he would become a very good stable jockey mm. um, he hasn't the experience of one of the Pat Edris and the Canans of this world or the Tories but he's a very good jockey uh, he'll, he'll go on improving uh, the majority of my owners are 100% behind me mm. I mean he'll continue to be first jockey at Warren Place this year and next year and I'm sure he'll continue having great success so can we confirm that Kieran Fallon will be retained next year, stable jockey to Henry Cecil? Of course, and there's never, there's no, never been any other question. Mm. But um, you know, we support him, we, know, we put him there, and, he, and he's doing his best, and on the whole he's doing very well, and everybody makes mistakes, whether, whoever it might be. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was unfortunate, you know, in our eyes, probably the, you know, the greatest filly of, our well, of today, yeah. that this happened, but I mean, it, it could have happened to anybody. Uh, it's just very unfortunate Paul Karen was riding it, but um, the pressure's off, you know, he, he knows he's got us behind him and um, he'll, he'll go out and continue to ride many, many winners for one place and everybody else. How much pressure is there from other owners? On the whole, people are very good, but, yes. um, you know, I understand if the odd person hasn't got confidence uh, and they'd rather have somebody else, I mean, Karen and myself, you know, we, we accept the situation. Um, the main thing is to the best for everybody. Uh, but on the whole, he'll ride the majority of the horses, and um, he'll do very well. When you say, very interesting point, they say, Kieran and myself, have you t sat down and talked about it in Warren Place and sort of said, come on, let's put this behind us? Well, we don't have to. We, we know each other well enough. I mean, I said to him this morning, and it, uh, he said, Governor, I think we might have a good day today. Let's look. If we have a good day, it'd be great. If it goes wrong, it's not the end of the world. There's always another day. Mm -hmm. How upset were you on Saturday? Well, very disappointing, really, for the filly. Um, more or less disappointed the way the race was run. Um, no pace on in the race, and things didn't go my way. So you, you can always rerun them in your mind. If you had to redo it again, when would you pull out? Would you pull out early? Would you make the pace? What would you do if you redo it again? It's just lovely, after well, timing. Yeah, well, I couldn't see the, the filly going to the front. When she does, she thinks she's enough done. It'd be a long way around there for her to be in front. She'd be there to be shot at. I thought Willie would have, won, would, have, would have gone a gallop. Mm. Um, there's nothing I could have done. I needed... Turning in, you, could you have yeah. angled out at that stage? Would you do that? Um, Michael Hill was on the outside, and he was probably travelling just as mm. well. But my only chance here is when the, the gap on the inside, mm. when the rail juts in, if I kick and get up Willie's inside, 
you know, eight times out of ten, the, you mean the horses will not go for that rail straight away. They'll go for four and gradually, gradually. And you thought you'd get there? I thought with one of put jazz, I'd get there and hold in position and, and, and work from there. But, but the, as soon as the, as soon as the gap, he, he's gone in straight away. And, and you stuck there. It. But you did get out two furlongs to run. Now, I, I, just some of us feel you had two furlongs to do it. She still didn't make up that much ground. How unlucky were you? Yeah, well, it wasn't that she didn't make up that ground. It was because of the slow pace earlier on, and then they sprinted. Because Tusky got first run. And a couple of lengths he stole. He's only beaten a length and a quarter. I think it would have been a ding dong to the line if I had sat and made quarters and waited till Michael Hills dropped away and then and went with her. You mean we probably would have found a different result? Well, all jockeys have made a mistake, but you paid for it. You've lost the ride on her and on Lady Carla. How uh, difficult is that for you? Well, it's not difficult. I mean, there's another probably 200 horses in the yard, and hopefully I'll be able to ride them. Um, hopefully Pat will get back on her again. He knows her fairly well, and he's had a great association with her. I, mean, I do wish them luck and hopefully they'll do better things. But the uh, relationship between jockeys and trainers is always a bit like, like a marriage. It can be under strain. It's clearly under strain now. And how difficult was it going out into the, the paddock this afternoon? Well, there's no strain in my, my half. Well, obviously, Mr. Stafford probably isn't as confident now as he, as he was, you know, going into the eclipse. But um, we'll probably change all that before the end of the year. I mean, you're way out ahead in the championship at the moment. You're confident you'll be champion jockey at the end of the season and stable jockey to Henry Cecil? Well, I, I don't know about confident. Uh, Frankie de Torre is meaning really right. Winners every day is doing very well. Pat's riding better than ever this year. and They're there, they're on my heels. and. You know, you know, from week to week it can change, and Frankie you could end up riding 10 minutes or pass, change the whole thing, but I'm there with a chance. And the Warren Place relationship, that's going to stay? Well, I'm happy enough there anyway. John Scott here with Bosra Sham, um, bigger than most of the colts in the race, we've just gone across in front of her, not had an uninterrupted preparation, we've all heard about her foot problems, how are things as up now? A1. Yeah? A1, yes, A1. What exactly has been the problem? Uh, Nothing serious, really. Excuse me, it's just like you, it's turn the stone, you get bruised with it. But has she lost much fitness into the no. bargain? No, no, no. After the eclipse, when obviously the pressure was on you and she was expected to win, she didn't win for whatever reasons, does that put more pressure on today? Yes, it does, yeah, yes, it does. Does but the yard feel that as a whole? Yeah, it does, yeah. But I'm very nervous myself. Yeah, you could tell that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you still get like that? I mean, you've been in the game a long time. A long time. Yes, I have, yeah. Is um, she special from that point of view? Very special. Yeah. Very special. She knows it all. She knows it. She's she a, looks it, doesn't she? She knows it. She's a queen. She's a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Cecil's obviously said it's the best he's trained, yeah. which speaks absolute volumes. Could she still continue improving? Yes. Yeah, I do. So you think she's likely to stay in training next year? Probably. I don't know, really. After, it depends after the races, yeah? yeah. We, take, we take each, each time it comes, yeah? Each race it comes. Obviously, a race like the International, I mean, it's worth an awful lot of money. Is it important, does the yard get into the fact, obviously, they get a percentage, they might back her. Does the money really have a high profile, or is it actually secondary to just taking her back in the box with a one in front? No comment. <laughs> Go on. No. Do you back her? No, never back to my life. No? No, honestly. Hello. Hi, yeah, you're on telly. You are. She is very, very beautiful. Nice to see you. Yeah, well, maybe the girls will put the boys to rights today. At York, as the Judmont International Stakes saw the clash between Singspiel and Bosra Sham, with the two derby winners, Benny the Dip and Desert King, making up the supporting cast in another field of just four. However, on this occasion, there was no muddling early pace, as Benny the Dip set off at a very respectable gallop and still held the lead as they straightened up for home. The fact that de Tory rates Singspiel the best he has ever ridden says it all. Bosra Sham lost her specially fitted near four shoe at halfway. It was sad she couldn't finish her career on a winning note. But looking at this, you have to doubt whether she could have beaten the winner over this trip. Singspiel takes command now from Benny the Dip. Bosra Sham's under the whip, followed then by Desert King behind them, but Singspiel sets sail for the judge. Two furlongs out a length and a half in front. The three-year-old Benny the Dip sticking to his guns well on the far side. Bosra Sham's under pressure, but she's digging deep now from Desert King. It's Singspiel in front with a furlong to go. A length and a half in front. Bosra Sham trying hard, but she can't find much more. Benny the Dip is beaten. Desert King running on for a place, but it's Singspiel, the Dubai World Cup winner, who's in front. Desert King.
King lunging late, but Singspiel wins the Judmont International. Second, Desert King. Third, Benny the Dip. And fourth and last, Bosra Sham. Bosra Sham, last of four. But look at this. After the race, Frankie de Tori said, Tomo, this is the heavyweight champion of the world.